Alrighty, welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I am your host, Larry the Chupacabra, and today we're going to talk about setting up the Overwolf video recorder for recommended settings, also some changes that you can make for performance, and um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty good stuff. Overwolf is a free program that you can download to any gaming PC, and really what it is, if you're not familiar with it, is Overwolf provides you with a sort of Steam overlay, like you get from Steam and you play in your games so that you can access your friends lists and other game information and stuff. But this one is more for like extra apps, extra software, extra tools that allow you to do everything from video recording to um, streaming and like a little extra tools like who you're facing, what their stats are, what their history is, and even like overlays that give you things like Minecraft recipes. And it's a, it's a pretty decent app, and it provides you with a lot of utilities that you might be looking for to help accentuate your um, gameplay experience or make it easier or more convenient. But what we're really concerned with today is setting up the in-game recorder that comes with it. So, you want to start out here by clicking the little arrow next to the big happy little wolf head and select settings. So here in the settings panel, we're going to want to jump down to the capture tab and we'll start digging into the various settings that you see here and have them make just a little bit more sense. So the first thing you'll probably notice is right here at the top, you can click on these two browse buttons to change the folder or the destination folder for where your videos or also your screenshots that the app can take, um, where you want those saved out to for easy access. Oftentimes, I like to save those types of things either to my videos folder or right there on the desktop in like a, you know, like an OBS folder or an Overwolf folder, something that's easy to remember and that you can find really quickly. Um, the next thing is uh, up here, you've got this little checkbox options to once you're done recording something, open the media player and then get ready to start playing it or previewing the video or screenshot. That's cool if you really want to see like that highlight clip you just made to see if you have to quickly re-record it. Personally, I pre-plan a lot of the videos that I'm about to make or uh, record, and I kind of hit them all really quickly in a row. So this isn't really a functionality that I'm looking for, but that's what that does if you're interested. And the, uh, the first major thing that we'll talk about down here is the different types of recording modes. So, Overwolf is primarily good for recording in-game footage of whatever it happens to be that you're doing. Um, I'm pretty sure it basically goes by, like, OpenGL or, like, DirectX. Uh, whatever is running on either of those platforms, it is able to really quickly and easily record. But Overwolf can also do some uh, monitor recording for stuff like I'm doing right now. So that you can record like a tutorial on how to set up software, wink, wink, nod, nod. Or maybe you just want to show like uh, some cool new app you found to your friends. You can record a desktop, you know, your mo or one of your monitors because you have the ability to select between multiple monitors. Currently, it says that it wants to select my main monitor, which is mirrored to my Elgato capture card that I am recording with. The other option here is to record whatever active game that you are currently playing in at the moment. And then you probably want to disable this. It also lets you capture and record any Overwolf software windows that are open at the time. But you don't you probably don't want that for your gameplay unless you're trying to uh, preview or advertise what some of the apps are doing inside of Overwolf. So I would leave the secondary checkbox unchecked. And so when you start your recording with this selected, it will record whatever screen is active at the time, even if you're playing in multiple games in windowed mode. So it is kind of handy. Next, we'll talk about resolution. This is a little bit more straightforward than most uh, recording softwares. You've got 480p, 720p, which is the basic um, 1280 by 720 is the basic level of HD footage to put up on places like YouTube, and then 1080p is the HD. And if you happen to be playing with like a really hot diggity smoking gaming rig that has the ability to play really smoothly 
at 4K video, something bigger than 1080p, then you can select original and that will allow you to record at unusual sizes above the standard 1080p sizes. Next, you've got the frame rates. You've got 60, 30, 20, or a custom frame rate. Um, for right now, most people are probably going to be wanting to run at around 60 frames per second. Now, here's the rule with the frame rates. I got to reiterate this in every video. If, and you should check this, there's the ability to check that in the software here. But um, if your game is not currently running at 60 frames per second or above, you're not actually going to be able to record 60 frames per second. You're going to record some reduced number like 35 or 46, and it's going to look choppy and poopy if you were upload that as 60 frames per second to YouTube. It's not going to look good. So if you're not getting 60 frames per second, you're going to want to throttle it back to 30 so that it looks smooth and people don't get fidgety or like, I don't know, seize out on you. Um, so yeah, definitely leave it at 30 and 1080p or 720p are the standards for like viewing on YouTube or even for streaming. Next, we've got our good friend, the video encoding codec, Mr. Chupacabra. You, I think you told us about this in another video, but uh, to refresh my memory. What is a video codec? Well, a video codec is basically the little bit of information in the computer that tells it how to encode your MP4 video. And there's a, there's several different ones of them from several different vendors that utilize your computer hardware in a different way. Just think about it as the computer brain that's making your video and you want to use the correct computer brain or weird things will happen. So in the selections here, you've got Intel quick sync here at the top, which uses your CPU. Well, the little miniature graphics processing unit attached to your Intel CPU. And then you've got the regular X264, which uses whatever um, CPU that you've got. And if you don't remember, X264 just stands for H264 or MP4 video. And then you've got NVIDIA NVENC uh, encoding. Or for me, I have AMD AMF GPU encoding. If you have a big fancy graphics card in your computer, which you probably do, you want to use either AMD or NVIDIA encoding because on those graphics cards, they already have a built-in video encoder. It's right there in the hardware. And if you use this, it requires very little resources for it to just keep an extra copy of all the frames it's sending to your monitor and save them out as a video. And um, if you don't have a graphics card and you have an Intel CPU, like an uh, you know Intel i5 or an i7, then you can use Intel QuickSync. It's a little bit more efficient for you to use the onboard graphics card because all of those come with a little couple of cores that it can dedicate to graphics stuff. And that'll be slightly more efficient than using just the CPU cores. For me, I have AMD, so that's the one that I'm going to go with. Now we're going to talk about how you can kind of optimize the performance of Overwolf for recording. You got this thing called preset and this sort of tells the computer what to give priority to. So automatic, which is a pretty good spot to set it out. Automatic will basically just intelligently say, okay, the computer is running really smooth. We're recording. The recording is really smooth. To stay the course, this computer can handle like high quality video. But in the event of something slowing down, there's a really graphically intensive moment in the game. It'll see that it'll reduce the recording quality just slightly for a little bit so that you don't see a drop in performance during your gameplay. And the people who watch the video later won't see a weird janky stutter. Now, if you, that's not really being very good at its job and you're seeing performance issues, you can go down here and you can set up speed. Speed will be all about your computer's performance, what you see, and it will prioritize that over the quality of the video you're recording. It's not as great, I will admit to you, but it's better than having a weird janky stuttery video that, you know, you can't do anything with. It looks like crap on YouTube. And some people have older computers and they just can't handle it. Then you want to run with speed if you got some performance issues. If you don't, 
and you want to make sure it forces it to play at highest quality and record at highest quality, then you'll select quality. If you kind of want to just set it in the middle of the road because you're not sure, you want it to be pretty good quality, pretty good performance, then you can select balanced. Me, I have a pretty good rig, but I'm not really certain how efficient Overwolf is, so I would set it at automatic. More options. Woof. Mouse cursor. Do I want to record it? Well, you can set it up so that you only record your mouse when you're on the desktop, or you only record the mouse when you're in the game, or you can record it for both. You're going to have to decide if and when you want people to see your mouse cursor. Some people, um, they play things like real-time strategy games like StarCraft II, Age of Empires, Civilization, Civ V, the new expansion pack with space or something, then it's important to be able to see where the mouse is. But, you know, everything else, it probably wouldn't matter if there's like a, you know, like a, a HUD or a reticle for a first-person shooter. That's probably good enough for most people. So you just got to decide. I would just leave it on. It's not really a big deal. System sound. Well, we want to make sure that we've got system sound. So... Whatever your default recording device is, mine is the AMD High Definition Audio so that I can record via my capture card. Um, select whatever device it is you use to hear game sounds. Select whatever microphone it is you're currently using. Sometimes more than one shows up in these categories. If you've ever plugged anything into your computer and then unplugged it, sometimes it stays in the list even though it's not plugged into your computer. Make sure you know what you're using and select the one that you're using or else you won't record your game sounds. You won't record your microphone sounds. Nobody likes silence. I fill the void of silence with static and white noise in the nighttime so that the demons don't catch me. But for you, uh, my current headset is uh, the Logitech. My current sound is a and d high definition audio. We're good to go. And that pretty much wraps up all the stuff you need to be worried about for game capture. Now, you remember I talked about frame rate, right? We said words that if you're not getting 60 frames per second in your game, don't record that. Well, if you don't know, or you're not sure how to tell, you can come down here to the FPS tab in the Overwolf settings, and you can select Enable In-Game Frame Rate Monitor, and you can do a quick round before you record, and you can see where everything is, and you can turn this off dynamically inside the game so it's not a big deal so you hit save and you're ready to go you might also want to set up a hotkey hotkeys are great um, these will allow you to start your recording stop your recording turn on and off specific settings when you're in the game so make sure if you want to use these instead of the in-game overlay that you do and um if you want to use the in-game overlay it looks like this saucy fella here it's trying to escape me, if you didn't notice, but this guy right here, he will appear on the side of your screen when you click him. He looks like a little lump, a little black lump. Just click it, it'll pop out, and you can click to browse with the little planet, or to view your apps, or to access the TeamSpeak panel, or to click the little camera icon to stop and start your recordings if you don't want to use uh, in-game hotkeys. And then, of course, it's got a little wrench there that you can select to adjust your settings as you go. So it's not a big deal. You can change these on the fly. So it's actually a pretty decent app, all things uh, in account. I will say that um, Overwolf doesn't perform particularly well on older computers, even if you um, set it for optimum settings. Uh, for performance, it doesn't do the best job. If you were going to run and try to record on an older computer with older hardware, I would definitely recommend Open Broadcaster over this or some of the more premium options out there that I haven't talked about yet. However, Overwolf does a pretty good job for most um, run-of-the-mill games that do pretty plain Jane stuff with DirectX and Unity and, you know, like OpenGL. All of those different platforms that people mess around with, like, Overwolf does a pretty good job. I would be very careful, though, on newer games, brand spanking new games that aren't well optimized yet. It can have some janky issues. It can run into a few flubs here and there when it tries to record those, at least performance-wise. So use with caution. Always make sure you do a test recording 
so that you don't lose a really critical moment of gameplay when you made a really awesome poop joke. I mean, we wouldn't want that. And um, if you're in the in the market for some other apps in here, they've got things like streaming, uh, not like a full app that like replaces the Overwolf recorder, but they've got some like, you know, you can load your Twitch chat inside of Overwolf to read stuff while you stream with another program. I'm pretty sure Overwolf doesn't stream currently. Um, it doesn't look like it does, but you can plug in your different social media accounts and upload to YouTube right from Overwolf. So, until next time, uh, I've been your host, Larry the Chupacabra. If you have any questions for me, I'm not the biggest expert for Overwolf. I've pretty much only played around with the video capture side of things. But I will try to answer your questions as best as I can in a pretty decent, timely manner. I mean, I work from home, so it's pretty easy for me to see that pop up on my phone, quickly pop you an answer if I know the answer, or to direct you where you can find the answers that you need. And um, if you guys got any other software you'd like me to take a look at or to promo or to like analyze, I've got both a Mac and a PC so I can look at them on both. It's fancy. And uh, yeah, I've been your host, Larry the Chupacabra. If you enjoyed this or this helped you, it'd be a great help to me if you would subscribe, like, comment, you know, all that stuff goes lengths to help me out. And uh, if it's not already up, it should be by the time this video gets uploaded. You could also check out my gaming channel where I do, like, game reviews, previews, editorials, all sorts of stuff. And, uh, well, I guess until next time, I uh, hope you guys get a lot of functionality out of Overwolf, and uh, have a good one. Bye, guys.